So today I am reviewing the Bluetti AC300, but this time we're gonna discuss how to parallel connect two of these units together in order to get split phase 240 volts so you can power like your whole home or plug it into your panel that you see behind me here, right there to power up your whole house. Now I've done a couple other reviews of this AC300 in 120 volts, so go ahead and check out my channel if you wanna see this just operating at 120 volts, which I highly recommend it for that as well. Now each of these Blue Eddy AC300s can run 3000 watts continuously and surge all the way up to 6000 watts. Now when you parallel connect both of these together, like I'm about to do, it doubles that. So you can do a continuous 6000 watts up to a potential 12,000 watt surge rating. And on each of these AC300s, you can have four batteries and each of those batteries are a little over three kilowatt hours. So on each one of these units, you can literally have 12 kilowatt hours. So four batteries here and then four batteries on here. Now the inverter is this top portion here and by itself, it cannot work. It has to have at least one of these batteries connected to it to work. So in order to get 240 volts, you're gonna have to have two of the inverters and then at least one battery on each one to get 240 volts. Now how I have it here, I have two batteries on each one. That's probably your most typical setup you're gonna see is that gives you about 12 kilowatt hours of power. And the average home uses between 20 to 30 kilowatt hours a day. So this is about a half a day's worth of backup for a home. But remember in a grid down situation, you're gonna be able to cut down your energy use dramatically and be able to stretch that a lot farther. And if you add solar panels to this thing, you can pretty much run indefinitely depending on if there's sun out and how low you can get that power consumption. And you can have a total of 2,400 watts connected to each of these inverters. So that's a total of 4,800 watts. So if you had sun and you were able to get your power usage down pretty low in your house, technically you could probably run indefinitely, of course, depending on how much sun is out. So now that you know the specs on these two units here, let's go ahead and walk through how to connect this into 240 volts. So right now I have these connected in just 120 volts. So this unit can do 120 volts and this unit can do 120 volts. Now, in order to get them together at a minimum, you're going to need this cable here, which basically plugs into each side and helps them to communicate with each other. Then you're going to need this cable, which those of you who have RVs are probably aware of this. It's basically a 30 amp connection. You plug each of these plugs one into right here, this plug into the other unit and then this is going to go into uh, an rv outlet if you have let's say a a 30 amp plug which i'm planning on probably doing which is mounting the 30 amp plug right next to my panel here you can literally plug this right into that and then you'll have a lockout switch kind of like if you guys for those of you who have a a gas generator right now a lot of you probably already have that outlet um, well you can get an adapter for this if you needed to change it from 50 amp down to 30 amp or whatnot um, but keep in mind, if you do put a plug in like that, it's going to power up with a transfer switch. It's going to power up your entire panel and keep in mind, 6,000 Watts is the max this thing, these two units can do combined. So it wouldn't be very difficult if you had your water heater running, you turned on your electric oven and you had the normal refrigerator lights to trip this unit out, to go over that 6,000 Watts max and shut it down. So what Bluetti actually has in order to basically avoid that from happening is they sell a, it's basically a critical loads panel with transfer switches on it, where you can connect all your critical circuits from your main panel here directly into that panel. And I'll go into detail on that panel. And then you could basically turn all of those switches on to run it off, to run your house only off that sub panel, that critical loads panel. So you don't have to worry about going over and maxing out um, this unit. Here's a closer look at what this cable looks like. So it's your standard 30 amp twist locking uh, female plug here. So here is the transfer switch slash critical loads panel that I was talking about that Bluetti offers. It's actually made by Reliance. So it's in the field quite a bit for other applications. So this is not made by Bluetti. Um, it is UL certified, so it can be used. Now it has this big bird's nest of wires, which don't let it get intimidate you. It's really not as hard as it looks. Um, and you want to mount this panel, like for me, you want to get it as close to your panel as possible because you want these wires to be able to reach those circuits over there in your panel. So I would mount it probably like right here, right next to it on the wall. 
and that would make for an easy install, just punching a hole through the wall and sending these wires over there. Now let's get into what this box actually does and how it works. So here is the Reliance Critical Loads panel, and you can flip it up here, and so these are the circuits you get to connect. Now they have it set up here where they want your 240 volts. So you can see these are double pole breakers. They'll go up and down together. These are your 240 volt circuits, and then these are your 15 amp, 120 volt circuits. Now they're on each on different phases. So like each Blue Eddy system here, each AC 300 is phase one and phase two. So everything on phase one here is on one unit. So you can see one, 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 it's every other one. And then phase two would be the other AC 300 unit. So you can see two, 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 two. Very simple. And how this works is you've got these, this little transfer switch on top. So right now I have it in the off position. But for instance, if you want it in grid mode only, so the grid is on, the grid's working, you would have it switched down here to line. And if the power went out, you would know obviously your house would have no power. You'd come over here and you just flip this to the generator position, which is where it's at now. And the AC 300 is now powering this panel and this circuit right now. And then you just flip on all of them, obviously up to the gen mode. And another thing to look at is it has this little meter up on top here that'll tell you right around how many watts you're using on each of your AC 300s. Obviously you wanna stay in the green, that's why it has it like that. Um, but you can see right on the screen also how many watts you are using. And that's what I would go off of, would probably be easier. Now let's get into how you actually wire this thing. So that big 240 volt plug that I showed you, that twisting lock, which is this plug right here that comes off the two AC 300s combined into this 240 volt plug. You plug that right in right here. So I will take this cover off here and there's a couple wires and they give you this plug right here. And that is exactly what fits into that cord I just showed you. And that's going to go right in this slot and it has labels here on how to wire it. It's really easy, 120 volt line, 120 volt line, a neutral and then a ground. And your wires are right inside here. They're actually kind of sticking out. You see it if I just reached in there and pulled them out. So, but to install that, you just take the cover off. Very simple, it screws right in place. That is how this panel is hotted up from the AC 300. Now let's get into how does this connect to your circuits inside your main panel? So here's how this connects to your home panel. Now it was a little confusing for me at first, but once I actually read the manual, which there's a couple pages that are really critical to read, it really is easy to understand this thing. Basically every one circuit, let's say you have one circuit that controls your refrigerator um, in your kitchen and you wanna have that wired in. So what you would do is each one of these circuits on here are labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and each black and red wire also, it's hard to see on camera, I'm sure, but it actually shows on here, C, 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 and on the red and the black. So what you do is these would go with one circuit on your panel. So what you would do is you would pull out the breaker in your panel, the 15 amp breaker, a 20 amp breaker, whatever it is, you'd pull that out, and then you would pull the actual wire out of that breaker, the hot wire, and you would replace it with the red wire. So this red wire would plug back into the breaker that you just pulled your black wire out that was in there. So that's this wire. And then you would take that one wire that you just pulled out of your breaker and you'd attach that to the black wire. So basically what that does is it sends power from the grid on that circuit into this box. That's how you can flip it to a grid, basically the line or generator. And then the other one is for the generator or the AC 300. So that's how so you do that with each circuit. You have to take out each wire out of all the critical loads that you want to replace or have connected to this panel in your main panel and connect each of these black and red wires to it. It's that simple. Now, disclaimer, you are working inside a 240 volt panel. So if you are not comfortable with electricity, do not do this. Hire an electrician. It's a day's work for an electrician to hook up this box. It's really not that difficult for them. So now besides each circuit having the red and the black wire, you also do have one ground and one neutral that you're going to need to connect inside your main panel as well. But other than that, that's really it. And one thing to note about this unit is the original 120 volt charging cables that you just plug into a standard wall socket to charge each one of these. 
that's not going to work when these are set up in a 240 volt mode. So for that to work, you'd actually have to use this cable here, which basically has two ends to plug into each of the AC 300s and then this 240 volt plug. Now they do give you a receptacle for it in the kit, but you're going to have to wire this into your main panel that you see behind me on the wall and add a circuit in your panel to add this to it. So that's one way to charge this if you want to be able to just leave it and charge it as is. But I found it's it's really easy just to set this back in 120 volt mode on each one, plug each one into a circuit and just charge them up individually. So either way you want to do it is fine. It's just, do you want to spend the money and do the labor to hook this plug up? That's up to you. Now I'm going to show you how easy it is to put this into 240 volt mode or connect these two units into parallel. So first thing to do is you got to add the communications cable across each of these units. And it's right here on the side of each unit. All right, so now that I have that communication cable connected, I'm going to go into the settings on each Blue Eddy AC300 and set it into split phase 240 volt mode. All right, and to do that, you're going to go into the settings mode here. You're going to scroll next, and then it says machine type, single phase. We're going to change that into split phase. And when we do this, an alarm is going to go off. Don't worry until you go to the other unit and also put it into split phase. It's going to be in an alarm setting. So that kind of fooled me at first. I thought I did something wrong. You're not. You just haven't completed the whole cycle yet. So let's set that into split phase. And this is the master. And there you go. You hear the alarm going off. And the alarm on the other unit's going off too because it's going, hey, what's going on? I'm not in split phase mode and yet it's communicating with me. So what we're going to do is go into settings on this unit now. Next, single phase. We're going to go to split phase and we're going to put it as the slave. There we go. Now the alarms will go off. All right, there's no alarm on this one now. Everything looks good. So now we should be in 240 volt parallel connection. All I have to do is click AC on, and that's automatically going to turn what we call the slave unit on as well, and it sure did. You see the green lit up there, AC on. Now let's plug in our cable. Now they have these labeled on these cables as AC1 and AC2. So I am going to put the AC1 into the master unit here. My first one into this 30 amp plug. All right, that one's plugged in. Now let's plug in the one that says AC2 into our slave unit, into the same 30 amp outlet here. All right, we are plugged in. And this is the end of it. And now this should be giving us 240 volts. So I'm going to put my meter on it and we will see if that's working. Sure enough, 240 volts. So we are working. Perfect. Simple as that. If you had an RV outlet on your wall right now, you could literally plug this right in. Obviously, you'd have to have a lockout switch. You have to have a breaker right here that would be basically that plug that's on the wall, your RV plug, 30 amp receptacle. You'd actually wire that into a double amp breaker right here or a double pull breaker. It has a lockout switch so you couldn't power the grid and that at the same time because you could have a bad day at the office if you had both of those on at the same time. So the grid's off, you'd have that port on, you plug it in, bam, your whole panel would be hotted up here at 240 volts and you'd have 6,000 watts available. At my configuration here would be 12 kilowatt hours. So it's that simple to get this thing connected. Now, if you're gonna use the Reliance critical loads panel, you'd plug that same, you plug this same plug right here, right into its receptacle. And then all those circuits that you have on that panel would hot up as long as you put it on into gen mode. It's that simple. Now this configuration setup that you see here with 12 kilowatt hours and two AC 300s with all of the equipment is quite pricey. It's about $7,000. Now that is before the federal tax credit, which this does qualify for. Um, so you'd have to talk to your accountant on that to make sure it works for you. But that does bring the price down roughly 30%. And if you wanted to add that Reliance critical loads panel that I showed you in this video, you're looking at around another $650 to $700 to add that to it. Now I can also get you $100 off this setup here or each individual unit if you bought them separately um, by using the discount code at checkout, Texan, T-E-X-A-N, AC300. And I'll have a link to all this equipment in the description 
of the video as well. Now, the good thing about this configuration here is you can start out small. You can purchase just one AC300 with one battery for about $2,000. That'll at least get you going. You can plug in refrigerators, your washer, you could use internet. You can even plug in a 5,000, 8,000 BTU window AC unit into this thing. It'll power it with no problem at all. So that'll at least get you some sort of backup in the event of a grid down situation. Then you can just start adding batteries as your budget allows. You can buy another battery later on, and then you could have one unit with two batteries. So you'll have even more backup power in 120 volts. And then you can add another inverter or another AC 300 unit when your budget allows. And then you can get this thing connected to 240 volts. So you can start out small, at least get this working for you. At least you have some sort of backup power. And then scale up from there as your budget allows. So hopefully this video helps you understand how this system works and how it can be paired together actually very easily, especially if you're just using an RV outlet or a standard generator port to plug into your home panel. And you could take this thing camping, you could put it in your RV and plug it in just like you would to any power source at 30 amps. And you can use it for home backup like I do. Now I live on quite a few acres here. So when I'm working out on the backside of my property, not near any power pole, not near any electricity, I can throw this thing in the back of my truck, use my power tools with it. So this thing packs quite a big punch, even at 120 volts. So make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content, and we will see you in the next video.